Good evening, good evening, good evening, Warriors on a Mission. And as I sat here today and I began to study the Word of God and I began to ask God, what do you have for us today? God began to give me many different thoughts. And as I began to study and, and, and just listen to God and allow Him to lead me through what He was saying and to the Word of God and and allow him to show me what he wanted for today. I'm left with something that I'm still allowing him to put together. Not that it's not prepared, but I love it when he puts it all together. And you see the title. It says, what is real love? What is real love? You know, I begin to, I saw something early and I was telling my brother in Christ earlier today that I saw a video that, oh my, it really, really, really bothered me. It really disturbed me today. I saw, a, I saw a video where there was a pastor. I saw a video where there was a pastor that was overseas and he had a congregation. It was a flock and they was at the altar. And there were many women laying on the altar, and at the heels of the women were many men. And this is what disturbed me. There was a gentleman at the head of the women with a belt, and there was a gentleman at the feet of the men with a belt. And they were whipping each one with a lash as they walked by. And the caption was, they were getting whipped because they had not tithed the Sunday before. And when I tell you that was so highly disturbing to me, that I literally wanted to cry. And then, of course, you say that if I had been there, you would, you know, would have done something to stop it. Which left me with those that are being manipulated by the enemy and in times inner, inner, inner me to lead and guide them for their own accord, for what their own personal gain are. And I'm saying to this that, again, I'm allowing God to put this all together, but that was the first thing that hit me that let me know that God had a purpose for me seeing that on today. And so when I saw that, I'm t I see those that those sheep that are seeking God, they want to know God for themselves. They want to honor God, serve God, love God, hear God, live for God. But then there's wolves in sheep clothing that are leading them astray. And unfortunately, my people perish from a lack of knowledge. Many of us are not seeking God enough to find out what is real and what is false. Hmm. And so I'm left with this. What is real love? But as I begin to study the word today, a passage of scripture just rang out to me. As I begin to ponder and think about what is real love. And the, God, the word of God says, what is real love unless a man, when he lays down his life for his brother and sister. And I said, God, what does that mean? When you lay down your life for your brother and sister. You know, as we begin to allow God to take over and we let ourselves die, we got to die daily. But as we allow the flesh and our fleshly desires and wanting to lead die, as it dies, God is able to allow his light to shine through us, which helps lead our brothers and sisters. God is speaking, God, I'm telling you, God is speaking, but he needs, just like any spirit needs a body, the Holy Spirit needs a body so that it can be led. It says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw one being unto me. That Holy Spirit is needing a body of someone who's willing to die to the flesh, who's willing to die and, and allow God to have com complete dominion over this 
shell of call body. And when that happens, then again, the Holy Spirit can lead. And then the Holy Spirit that says, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. So as the Holy, as the, the, the person is willing to allow the flesh to die and allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us in our thoughts, in our actions, then that person, the Holy Spirit is lifted up in that person. And then all men can be drawn unto the Holy Spirit in that person, i.e., Real love, dying, and laying down our life for our brothers and sisters. We don't often understand that there is a chain connected to us dying daily and our brothers and sisters being delivered. But God would never have given us the example of Jesus Christ dying on the cross so that look at all of us that flocked, that were able to just have a choice to accept real love, to accept life everlasting. Jesus died just for us to have a choice to accept him. So what is real love? Real love is lying down our lives for our brothers and sisters and understand that in the spirit, that if we're willing to die in the flesh, then the Holy Spirit can have dominion and then those around us will see the light. Man, you know what? It's not always how we drive the Bible, but sometimes God just want us to show up so that he can do the speaking. He can do the drawing. I'm learning more and more and more that it's not what I say, but it's how I allow the Holy Spirit to dominate in me. That smile, that presence, it's the things that I don't consciously do. It's what the Holy Spirit uses to draw brothers and sisters to the body to the fold it's the as the people say the aura it's the Holy Spirit it's that feeling when God uses someone to just get in the mist and you're here people start to say things like this man it's just something about you it's just something about you ha huh? it's the Holy Spirit what is real love as I began to go farther, God began to give me a passage of scripture. And you see it. Luke, the 22nd chapter, verse 3, is what I kept hearing. Luke 22, 3. Luke 22, 3. And I could see Luke 2, 2, and 3, and I'm like, God, what is it? God said, turn to it, Luke 22 and 3, and Luke... I'm like, okay, God, it's not, is it Luke 2 and 20? No, Luke 22 and 3 is what I can see. Luke 2, 2, 3. Luke 2, 2, 3. And as I began to study it, Luke 22 and 3. God gave me Luke, 20, Luke 22 verses 1 through 3. And we're going to read through it and then we're going to go into prayer. Verses one, verse 1 says, Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priest... And the scribes saw how they may kill him, for they feared the people. Then enter Satan unto Judas, surnamed Ascalot, being of the number of the twelve. Let us pray. God, I thank you for your word. God, I pray, Father, that you have complete dominion and speak with clarity to your children. Lord, you know how to do this thing through the Holy Spirit. And so I thank you in advance for feeding us. To get equipped to get the food we need to sustain and be more, to have more dominion over the flesh in our body. To have more dominion over the inner me and allow your spirit to dominate in us. I thank you, God. I thank you, God, because you are feeding your spirit in us, making your Holy Spirit dominant in us. As the, as the flesh died daily, you are doing this right now, and I thank you. Feed us. Feed your spirit in us. Feed us, God, so that your spirit is stronger, and the flesh can continue to die. And we thank you for it. For it is in Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, here we go, y'all. Looking at verse 1, it says, Now the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. And the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might kill him.
for they feared the people. Then enter Satan unto Judas, surnamed Ascalot, being the number of the twelve. You know, as God began to give me this, and I'm studying, and I'm studying, I'm like Luke 22 and 3, and I'm looking, and I'm looking, and I kept looking and rereading verse 3, and it says, Then enter Satan unto Judas, surnamed Ascalot, being of the number of the twelve. And my question was, God, what made Judas subjective to Satan? What made Judas vulnerable to Satan? What, check this out. Now, ask yourself this question. What made Judas vulnerable to Satan? And we know, okay, Judas, Judas was the treasurer. We knew, okay, you can go and say, okay, Judas, this was what he was ordained to do. This was, was his purpose, okay? But what made him subject to, the, to Satan at this moment? And as God began to explain to me, go back to verse 1. It says, Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. Now, if you remember the first Passover, the Passover was the Israelites putting blood on the doorpost so that the death angel would pass over their door, pass over their door and not cause death in that house. That was the original Passover. So the celebration is go to the spiritual meaning of the Passover. So the Passover was meaning that the Holy Spirit, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus, the blood had to be in the house. Good God. Thank you, Lord. The blood had to be in the house in order for the death angel, that demonic spirit, death angel had to pass over, move away from the house where the blood of Jesus was pleading. Somebody following with me already. So now come with me in the spirit as we say again. So now if the blood of Jesus had to be over the house, the blood of Jesus, Jesus had to be present in the house in order for the demon to pass over. I'm going to say it again. So that means in the spiritual realm, Jesus had to be present in the house so that the demon could not enter in. Where Jesus was present, the demon had to pass over. So we're celebrating, this was there in verse 1, now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh. The feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. Listen, do we still understand that as things happen, as we go into seasons, even through the calendar year, they're still saying something of what's going on in the spiritual realm. This is evidence of it. Because what happened was the celebrating of unleavened bread. So I said, God, what is unleavened bread? Even though I kind of knew, I wanted to make sure. Unleavened bread was bread that did not have yeast in it. Meaning all of the agents that caused the bread to rise for those that know how to cook, right? That meant there was no yeast in the bread. And I said, okay, God, wait a minute, wait a minute. And God began to drop a, a, a scripture into my spirit that he says, I am the living bread. I think it's found in, in John, maybe five, uh, fifth chapter. I am the living bread. I am the living bread. I am the, this is what Jesus says. I am the living bread. Wait a minute. And so as I begin to think about it, I said, wait a minute. So this was a celebration. Here we go. Somebody following with me, please. Now, the Feast of Unleavened Bread drew nigh. And so for us to, for Jesus to have, God wanted unleavened bread to represent the Passover, which means there was no agents to cause the bread, the bread to rise. But yet Jesus says, I am the living bread. So what this Passover is, is here we go if Jesus is in the if Jesus is in the bread if Jesus is in the house if Jesus is in the house then there is no other agent that is needed for the bread the house to rise man I pray you following me I say again unleavened bread means there is no yeast in the bread the bread represented, oh God, here we go. The bread represents, as, as we take communion, the wine represents the blood, 
The bread represents the body. So this bread, thank you, Lord, this bread that God is talking about here, this whole celebration of unleavened bread and what made Judas, Judas vulnerable to the devil, to Satan so that he could be used. Okay, unleavened bread, meaning this is the bread because then we talk the bread represents the body and there is no yeast to celebrate unleavened bread. So Jesus says, I am the living bread. So now if Jesus is in the bread, the body, then the death angel of Satan had to pass over. I know somebody just went with me as we put the, as God put all this together. Because this is coming right at you. Not from Tyrese, this is from God. And so, what made Judas vulnerable? He didn't have Jesus inside the house. Judas still did not have, even though he walked with Jesus, this is what made him subject this is what made him vulnerable, y'all. This is what made Judas vulnerable. It's because Judas did not have the living bread on the inside. And as we celebrate it, see, this is why you got to be careful, man. Those of us that are in the body of Christ knows there are some seasons of the year where dem demons are more prevalent, i.e. Halloween i.e. certain celebrations, Mardi Gras, and all this, all these places where there are demons displayed, man, all of them are not costumes, and you got to think about what drove the person to put on the costume in the first place. It was a demon. When you understand spiritual, when you understand spiritual warfare, when you understand the spiritual uh, atmosphere, that they come with strong thoughts. Like when you begin to praise God, it's evident that the Holy Spirit is moving. We've seen it. Been in a church and all of a sudden, worship burst out on the right side and you see it migrate to the left side of the church. You see it in the front. You saw it in the choir stand and then it moved to the, to the pastor and then it moved to the front row. We've seen it. This, a display of the Holy Spirit. Well, if you can have a display of the Holy Spirit, you can have a display of demonic spirits, which is why you get a certain anger, burst of anger, and then you have a whole crowd in anger, a mob. You have one or two that enter into a crowd full of lust, and then you see the crowd participate in lustful behavior. A display of a spirit. And so what happened was during this unleavened, this, this Passover time frame, you had demons walking around. And just like the celebration of the original Passover, because Judas did not have, did not have the living bread inside the one that rises the bread inside the body. He still had artificial, which was himself. Which made him subject, which made him vulnerable to Satan attack. And so that's why in verse 1 it says, Now the feast of unleavened bread drew nigh, which is called the Passover. Verse 2, And the chief priest and the scribes sought how they may kill him, for they feared the people. So now if you have people at the Passover and they're displaying a demonic spirit of murder, and the chief priest and the scribes sought how they may kill him, the him is Jesus, for they feared the people, fear, fear, God did not give us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. That lets you know that there are two uh, key words to let you know what spirits was, was dominating the scribes and the chief priest. And so you now know that these two demonic spirits are there, right, at the Passover. You know that there's a spirit of murder at the Passover, and you know that there's a spirit of manipulation there because you saw it all how they're trying to conjure up a way on how to kill Jesus. Manipulation, okay? So that's three. Chief priests sought how to kill, murder, for they feared, fear, not of God. So that's three. And so now we know that they're at the Passover. This is, these demonic spirits are there at the Passover. And so because Judas did not have the living bread on the inside, this is how he became vulnerable, subject to the enemy, how Satan was able to use him. And so you see in verse 3, 
then entered Satan into Judas, surname Ascalot, being of the number of the twelve. Check this out, y'all. You want to know how you become stronger? Continue to leave the door open for God to dominate. Let the Holy Spirit dominate. It is a process. How I know it's a process because the Word of God tells us that we must die daily. Daily. If it wasn't a process, you'd only have to die one time. But it's a daily thing. Man, you know what I'm finding out? You know why God, why, you know, we have the custom of praying in the morning and praying in the evening. And prayerfully, you can throw some prayers and some time with God in between. What I find out is that praying and talking to God in the morning helps shift me back and focus and get my spirit fed so that I can walk in victory through the morning. Now, what I find out, which I should be doing, Real new time, I'm so bogged down with the cares of the life that I'm in a truck. This is my business. Got to get there. Got to get there. Got to get there. I need to eat again. I'm talking for me. I need to eat again. But what I find out is if I spend time with God in the evening time, that I can rest in peace and get some good night's sleep. But when I wake up in the morning, my thoughts are a little off. I'm talking about me. Y'all might be great. I, I, I'm talking about me. When I wake up in the morning, my thoughts are still a little altered. Somehow through the night, uh, and I know the enemy's trying to get to me at night, right? And that's why sometimes we have the dreams that we have. But when I wake up in the morning, my thoughts are a little altered at times. And so if I'll spend time with God, it aligns me back with him, gives me the food that I need to walk in victory. And as I said before, during lunchtime, I need to get some time. I need to pull over somewhere. I, I'm serious. Because I'm noticing that and I'm talking about it. If I got that lunch in, if I got my lunch in with God, then that'll help me to get me for towards evening. All right? And then that will keep, I'll, I'll be able to cast all my cares upon the Lord. I wouldn't be all frustrated, right? Because I noticed this now. Y'all might be different, but I can talk about me. And so what, what happens, what happens is you and I got to feed. We got to eat. And once again, as I said before, God gives us things in the natural to show us what we need to be doing in the spirit. So if we eat in the morning and then we eat in the afternoon and then we eat in the evening, that sounds like what? Three meals a day. That's right. And so what is real love? Understanding that what God is trying to get us to do is to die daily so that he can use us to bring more. Now, I'm telling you, God is trying to break chains, but he needs the body. He needs the body. We represent Christ here. So the more you and I die daily, the more God can use us to get others to deliver. Did you catch it? Man, God, I'm telling you. The more you and I die daily, as God began to tell me this morning, ho ho, can we go down? Can I can we go down? If you keep your hands holy, then when you when you touch somebody, then the Holy Spirit ain't got no choice but to touch, but but to go, go through. If you keep your lips holy, then the Holy Spirit ain't got no choice but to go forward and begin to touch. Those that God used to speak to. If you keep your feet holy, then as you move, you have no choice but to move on purpose and be at the proper place at the right time. So God is trying to get us to die daily so that we can be more effective for the kingdom. Amen. I'm saying, I'm telling you, God is God has a unique, God has a unique way of getting this done. And that's why the word of God tells us that the ways of God is foolish unto man. You can't use the thought process of this thing right here without the Holy Spirit and think that you can understand the way God moves. That's why the old cliche is God works in mysterious ways. He ain't mysterious because the Holy Spirit makes it clear. He only mysterious to those that is absent the Holy Spirit that has leavened bread. Come on. But if you got unleavened bread and God is the bread, 
Jesus said, I'm the living bread. And you got Jesus on this side, meaning the Holy Spirit is live in you. Oh, he ain't mysterious. You understand the strategy because the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. And you you can understand spiritual things and it, 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 it makes complete sense. And so I say on today, let us continue to die daily. I ain't talking to y'all, I'm talking to us. We got to continue to die daily so that God can get the glory out of this creation, out of this season of life that you and I are living in. We say, man, look at this world. Ooh, it's so... Mm -mm. Let's look at us and then allow God to have complete dominion. Die daily, y'all. Die daily. It goes completely against the flesh, which lets you know that you're walking in the right direction. Flesh said, I got to have this. I, I got to be in control. Holy Spirit said, die daily and let me have control. So let's continue down the path of righteousness, y'all, so that God can get the glory. I thank y'all for those that have tuned in. Continue to let God use you. Continue to die daily. I'm talking to, not talking to y'all. I'm talking to us. Continue to let God use us. Continue to let God break down spiritual things so that you and I can be completely effective for what God has created us to be. You ever wondered why God created you to be born the exact day, the exact month, the exact time that you were born around the exact people you were born around? Because that's your level of influence. Once you allow God to lead and guide you, oh, you'll see it. You'll see it. Only you could do what God has created you to do. To affect those that God has ordained for you to affect. But the only way it can be done and done most effectively, he has to lead. The Holy Spirit has to lead. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Y'all, let's close out in prayer. Father, I thank you for your word on the day. I thank you, God, but once again for breaking this thing down in a way that God I had never seen before. Thank you so much for breaking it down. And I understand now. I understand the purpose of Passover in a way that I've never heard or seen before. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for making it clear. And Lord, continue to make it clear in our life so that we'll take this with us and what in our daily walk. In a way, Father, that you will get the glory, Father. You continue to increase in us as our earthly, our desires and our desires to lead, all of that stuff dies daily. You have control. We died on the cross and we rose with you. You are the one that's in the dominant now. As you rose, it's no longer I, but Christ who lives within me. So here you go. I'm yours. We're yours. Now, God, I ask that you will give us the patience, the compassion, and the, the whatever we need to go through the process of life that you've ordained for us to live. It ain't always rainbows, but if we live for you, we'll have the victory. Thank you, Lord, for what is in your name, your precious name, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus the Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. All right, y'all. If you're just logging on, I'm telling you, you missed something real good. You missed something real good. Go back and, and watch this. I promise you, it's going to bless you. It's Hey, I heard it for the first time as I begin to study this evening. And so, and you'll see, you're probably going to see a couple of times where God began to speak to me while recording. Amen. First time I heard it, thank God for it. Awesome message from him. Appreciate you, Father. Thank you for teaching. Amen. Love y'all. Prayerfully, we'll be together again Sunday, 10 o'clock, Warriors on a Mission. Uh, once again, Macon Rural Fire Department in Macon, North Carolina. Feel free to come out. Gas it up. Come on out. Come on see us. Amen. We are getting close to our first open door anniversary. September 10th will be our first door anniversary, which we're going, I'm looking now to have us a special service on September 8th. September 8th, 2024, uh, same place as of now, Macon Rural Fire Department, we'll have a special service. And I thank God, I'm telling you, I, only God. 
And I'll leave it like that. Only God. I love y'all. Stay tuned. Stay in God. Stay in Him. Stay in it. Stay in it. Stay in it. Stay in Christ. Stay in Him. Stay in Him. Stay in Him. Continue to die daily. Stay in Him. Stay in Him. Stay in Him. Amen. That's the best way I can put it. Y'all have an awesome day. Bye-bye.